Hi, thanks for stopping by. This tinkering video is all about upgrades, as I'm swapping out my mini laser engraver for a larger K40 style machine. Let me show you how. To start off with, I needed to modify my desk. So I marked out and drilled a 60mm hole that would accept a table grommet. This will let me run piping and cables down below and won't ruin the look of the desk if I decide to move the laser to a new location. So this is my 40 watt CO2 desktop laser engraver which will also cut down to a depth of around 3mm in a single pass. This version has a digital controller rather than the analogue ammeter style. Other bells and whistles include the emergency stop button you can see on the top and a strip of LED lighting inside the cutting area. Underneath the control panel you can see the power supply and the M2 nano board that controls the unit. Another neat feature that's situated behind the power supply is this flow control switch. This acts as a safety cutoff to prevent power reaching the laser tube if there isn't any water flowing around it to keep it cool. This laser also comes with a Ziploc bag full of goodies, including the user manual, an extra long USB cable, a USB dongle, some software, silicon sealant, tape, and an extra piece of protective acrylic. Now, if I were you, I would take that USB cable, the dongle, and the software, leave them in that Ziploc bag, and never put them anywhere near your computer. Following recommendations from my friends online, I'm going to be using the open source K40 Whisperer software, which just happens to be fully compatible with the M2 nano board in this machine. Now don't discard that user guide, take some time to try and understand what it's telling you. So let's get this hooked up. Around the back of the machine is the laser tube and the water inlet and outlet pipes. These pipes are going through the hole I made in the desk earlier. That green liquid you can see is just the residue from the testing they did in the factory. Now you can't use water straight out of the tap, so I'm going to be using distilled water, which I'm keeping in this bucket. This is circulated around the laser tube by the water pump that is also included with the machine. For now I'm powering this directly from an outlet on the back of the machine, so when I turn on the master switch, the water automatically starts to flow. One more thing to fit is the exhaust fan which is also powered directly from the unit. And now you can see that I positioned the laser in front of a window that allows me to run this ducting straight up and out and get rid of any fumes that are created. So with that, everything's in place. Next step is to try cutting something. I downloaded a snowflake design from the internet and imported that into Inkscape. And then I resized it to a more manageable size. The K40 Whisperer software uses specific colors to control specific actions within the machine. For cutting, the lines need to be red. And then I just saved that as a standard SVG file. I had a piece of walnut left over from a previous project. So I cut off a square test piece. I turned on the laser to illuminate the cutting bay. Pulled open the spring-loaded jaws and clamped the wood in place. I also used the unlock rail feature in K40 Whisperer so that I could manually position the laser head directly over the corner where I wanted to start cutting. Then, in K40 Whisperer, I tried to open the Snowflake SVG file. This process reuses a little bit of the functionality within Inkscape. So you need to tell K40 Whisperer where Inkscape is located on your machine. Once that's done, the file will import without a hitch. All that was left to do then was click on the red Vector Cut button in the bottom corner of the screen.
After the cut had finished, I waited a minute for the smoke to clear and then unclamped the wood. And this is my very first cut on my K40 laser, a walnut snowflake. And that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this project, and if you did, let me know in the comments. Now that the laser's up and running, I have plenty more projects waiting to be done with it, including my first upgrade. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on those. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.